So I want to talk about side projects today. So a common question I get is, do we need side projects? Especially for top tech companies like Microsoft, Google, Facebook. I've interviewed a lot of people at Microsoft and it's very rare to actually go over in depth about uh, personal or side projects. There are, however, a couple of caveats. One, if you're a beginner at software engineering or you've just graduated school, then your academic projects and your side projects are of some importance. Two, if your side project is something unique or impactful, then that becomes a conversation topic as well. But that doesn't mean that your side projects aren't important. They actually are. The problem is that we look at side projects purely from an angle of adding something to the resume and not from our own interests and skills. When we do side projects for our own skills and interests, the benefits will automatically add up to your resume. Remember that the main goal of doing these projects is to get better at software engineering and have fun while at it. So what makes a good side project? I think a good side project utilizes various different technologies. It's likely going to be full stack that utilizes your front end, back end, multiple cloud services, IoT hubs, hardware, software, interfaces between different kinds of technologies, where you not only make use of different kinds of technologies, but also learn how they communicate with one another to build the entire system. So you probably also want to use the latest tools, frameworks, and popular programming languages so that what you end up doing is transferable to other projects as well. You need to have passion for it. There needs to be a story behind it. Why did you participate on it? Why did you contribute to this project? What's the idea behind it? What was the goal? And that always makes up for a cool story. It doesn't have to be a complicated project, but it's got a good reason behind it. For example, when the COVID pandemic started, a lot of people were building websites that could gather data uh, from various sources to let people know what the spread was, what the r not was, and a lot of other details about coronavirus. That's something that is fairly simple to do in terms of technology, but has huge impact if a lot of people can easily find information because of that. And finally, a great side project is one that is fun. I often see a lot of uh, fresh graduates work on the same kinds of side projects, from your variation of a to-do list to this typical website that everybody bills, a Sudoku solver, and things like that that have been beaten around for many, many years right now. Come up with something interesting, funny, um, and then tie that to the passion story that you have. And I think that makes up a great uh, conversation piece even when you look for jobs or when you're talking with your interviewer. Software projects don't have to be boring. Let your personality come through in the projects and I think that will go a long way. So we kind of know uh, what makes a side project good. Uh, so how do we go about picking one? I recommend that you try to work on side projects that fall under one of the following categories. Number one, open source projects. The best way to build credibility in the programming community is to participate in an open source project. It's a known fact. It is known. It is known. And contributing to open source project is almost like climbing a ladder. When you first start, you contribute to basic housekeeping like fixing documentations or minor changes. Then you graduate to fixing small bugs. Then you make small feature contributions. And if you keep making meaningful impact to the project, you'll eventually get promoted to a reviewer or an owner, which I think is pretty cool. One very useful open source project that I've personally participated in is called WebHint. I'm actually wearing the t-shirt right now. It's a customizable linting tool that helps your site's accessibility, speed, cross-browser compatibility, so on and so forth. Developers can use WebHint in multiple different ways. There's a command line interface, Visual Studio Code extension, browser extension, as well as a hostable component. And I think it's a great project for you to contribute to that is part of the JS Foundation and backed by Microsoft as well. And I personally know some of the devs that are admins there and they're phenomenal people, so try it out. And if you simply cannot find an open source project that you're interested in, another great option is to start one. Create an open source project, contribute to it, build something useful that solves a specific problems that others can use as well. Get your friends involved. It's as much of a social event as a night out with your friends. The second option is to try to build something that utilizes a range of cloud services. Almost everything these days is built on top of a complex network of distributed services. So it's a great idea to try to build something that utilizes a bunch of cloud services and components. You've got your client side things like apps and websites, 
that connect things over an API to the backend, which is built on top of a plethora of distributed services like message queues, IoT hubs, databases, containers, so on and so forth. While your side projects may not be large enough to require things like containers and load balancers, I think if you still try to utilize them in some form, it's a great way to learn system design in general and the basics of scalability. So one fun project that I always wanted to build in this scope, but I never had time, was to actually help me out with groceries. So I shop at Costco a lot. And if you go to Costco, you know that they only sell things in bulk. So what happens is, say I go buy olive oil, it comes in a pack of three, and then we'll use one and put two of them in the pantry. So next time when that first jar of olive oil finishes and I'm at Costco, I think that I've run out of olive oil, so I end up buying three more, and then realize that now I have five in the pantry, right? So what I thought was maybe I could make use of some open source barcode scanning tool connected to a backend via maybe a bot or just built an app that maintains an inventory of things that I've bought from Costco in my database. So then every time I'm at Costco and I think I need something, I can quickly scan that barcode and check if I have that in my inventory. So that way I don't buy it twice or thrice or whatever, right? Could even connect this to Alexa or Siri and then I don't even have to look it up. I can just say, hey Siri, do I have an olive oil? And then Siri could just answer, hey, you've got two in your pantry. This is something simple, but it's fun. It's, it's a nice conversation topic. It's cool to flex to your friends, but it also utilizes a lot of aspects of you know your front-end apps your apis you know and you, and you can get pretty adventurous with a complicated back-end system that can connect to iot hubs and things like that so i mean try it out i mean if, if you ever build this let me know because i definitely need one the second fun project that can utilize a range of cloud services is what i call a dog sprinkler system or dog free sprinkler system so my dog hates sprinklers so i've got my sprinklers time to go at i think 10 on three days of the week or four days of the week but then sometimes we're still outside and my dog is out in the backyard and the sprinklers will go off and he will go and he will bite the sprinklers and he's literally eaten three sprinklers already because the sprinklers go off so what I thought I could do is like maybe get something like a Raspberry Pi or something like that that can connect to the Wi-Fi and hook onto my camera or something like that and then build a system that eventually connects to my sprinklers so if the camera detects that people or even dog especially my dog is outside it won't turn on or it'll send me a notification that hey sprinkler was set to turn on at 10 but your dog's outside so we're not going to turn it on it's a pretty simple app it's funny um it solves a purpose and i think dogs universally hate sprinklers so it could be open sourced as well but i think it also uses a wide variety of technologies and services that will be helpful to you when you actually build bigger or more important apps right so the third area that i look to get involved in is machine learning and we know that machine learning plays a huge role on everything we do these days from your camera detecting a person to your Facebook ads to your email calendar being smart about when to schedule certain things something else you could do is um, gesture controlled driving so I've got a Logitech racing wheel and I thought it'd be pretty cool to see if you could somehow bypass using that wheel and have it gesture controlled and play a game I think that's a pretty cool application of machine learning and also fun to kind of try it out with your own controller and see how accurate you can get. Another one that's very relevant to current situation is detecting whether someone's wearing a mask or not. You can find open source Python libraries to kind of train to do that kind of stuff. But yeah, like get a bunch of pictures of people wearing masks and train it in a way where it's really good at detecting those masks. And then again, you can open source those kind of things or if there's already one, try to participate in those. And not only is it cool machine learning application, but also pretty useful in the current context. So the fourth area you can look into is freelance projects. You can go to websites like fiverr.com or upwork.com and look for your skill set over there and you'll find that there are a lot of projects that people are looking help with. So you can pick projects there that you have skills for or you're looking to learn. The first few projects will probably be a little bit of a challenge because people already look for people that have ratings. So maybe you'll do it for cheap, you know, or even free. Hey, I'll build an iOS app for free. Positive thing about doing freelance project is they come in a range of lengths. So you can do something that takes you a weekend to something that's like a three month project. And not only do you build your online portfolio, but also make some side income doing that. So I think that's a great option as well. 
And the last area you could probably get involved in is competitive coding. And this will probably have the biggest impact if you're looking to get a job at one of the top tech companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, because the questions they ask in the interviews are directly pulled out of competitive coding. It will essentially be a question that tests your problem solving skills in a limited amount of time, for which you need thorough knowledge of data structures and algorithms. So competitive coding is a great way to build all that. For example, if I gave you 10 cities with a road network that connects those cities with varying distances between them, could you write the code that finds the shortest distance between any of those two cities in less than 30 minutes? This is basically just a super simplified version of Google Maps. And it's basically using some algorithm to find the fastest route between point A to point B. These are how interview questions are. So if you thought this problem was challenging to you or you thought it was really interesting, competitive coding is one of the things that you can do to get really really good at it. And the side benefit is that you automatically prepare yourself for interviews at one of these top companies. So yeah, I think those are five very useful areas to look into for inspiration for your next side project. But remember to do the side projects because you are interested and passionate about them and not just for your resume. And if you already have a side project that you have worked on or you have a cool idea that you think will be a great side project, let me know in the comment below and I'd love to check it out. Thanks.